Welcome to another Answers in Jubilees, produced by The God Culture. We are on episode 43, only nine more to go, and we are charting to do so early in even less than 52 weeks. Wow. For us, this has been a life-altering experience, as Jubilees vets and proofs as Torah, filling in so much of Genesis and the rest of Torah that we all need in order to understand them. Again, if you have not read this book, especially the introduction, just go to bookofjubilees.org. It's free in the ebook. You can download it for free. Uh, read it. And here we go again. We are told by the rabbis that Esau was named Edom because he had red hair. Edom means red. Yes, his body was hairy, and yes, he is called red. But, see, here's the thing. Jubilees comes right out and tells us how Esau got this name, and they're wrong. Genesis actually tells us his skin tone and red hair, well, it's just not found anywhere. So, what color was Esau? Well, this is really cool. Uh, you'll love this. Why was he named Red Edom? It's time to squash this propaganda, see, because... The Jews are using this to claim that, well, since Esau had red hair, well, he must have been Jewish. They try to do the same with Samson, and also a lie. First, that's stupid, because the word Jew is not of Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, Latin, Old French, Old German, nor Old English origin, so one using the word is clearly not a Hebrew. Don't even know it. The word should never be used in the Hebrew Bible. Now watch Origin of the Word Jew and really our Lost Tribe series where we really prove that out uh, and or answers in 2nd Esdras. We prove that out and they fail miserably. They are not, modern Israel is not, the Lost Tribes of Israel. So on this point, is it any different? Well, let's see what Torah says as it is the authority, not any rabbi trying to stretch claims to justify their existence as the synagogue of Satan, which they cannot do in any logical way. They can't actually do it with geography, uh, with history. It, it doesn't exist. They have no such track. Oh, we track them in Answers in Second Esther's. Watch that. We track Babylon and the Pharisees. They are the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Yahudim and are not, but do lie. That's Revelation 2.9 and 3.9, the words of Messiah. They wouldn't know the answer, as the temple priests tell us that the Pharisees, modern rabbis, turned a blind eye to Jubilees then, which it calls Torah in the same passage. And that remains, they simply don't know the answer, and a lot of answers, because they're absent the Book of Jubilees, part of Torah. They live in this gray area, though, forced by this kind of censorship. And this ends now. And many times in this series, we've, we've just dispelled this stuff. Open your Book of Jubilees to chapter 24, verse 1. And it came to pass, after the death of Abraham, that Yahuwah blessed Isaac his son, and he arose from Hebron, and went and dwelt at the well of the vision in the first year of the third week of this jubilee, seven years. Sheba years. And in the first year of the fourth week, a famine began in the land. A lot of people don't realize this. This is huge. Besides the first famine, which had been in the days of Abraham. So this was a big famine, just like it was. This is dire, folks just like it was in the time of Abraham. The circumstances leading up to Esau selling his birthright for hunger was real, and it was serious. There was a great famine during this time. Now we can understand the context of what would drive him to do so. It was not an arbitrary nor a minor oath, and it was legally binding. You'll see. And Jacob sod lentil pottage, soup, and Esau came from the field hungry. Again, not just hungry. Remember, these are the days of great famine. And he said to Jacob, his brother, give me of this red pottage, soup. And Jacob said to him, sell to me 
thy birthright, and I will give thee bread and also some of this lentil pottage soup. Sounds a little crazy, right? I mean, so trivial. Yet it's not. See, there is a reason why Esau would commit to this. He had no respect for his birthright, first of all, so he placed no value on it. You need to understand that. And yes, he was the oldest, but we already saw Yahuwah prophesied this would happen, right? And he chose, we'll get to this, he chose uh, Jacob over Esau. So that is clear from their birth. And Esau said in his heart, I shall die of what profit to me is this birthright. Again, he had no respect for its true value. Esau didn't care. And he said to Jacob, I give it to thee. Now, this is a contract. This is an oral contract, but binding biblically. Remember, we all know that in Numbers 30, verse 2, we covered before, Moses wrote in uh, if you give your word in an oath, you are to keep it. Pretty simple. Keep your word. You will find this principle already established before Moses, especially in this story. There it is right there. Yahuwah never rebuked Jacob for keeping Esau to his word. Notice that. This was binding and it was a legal oral document of essence uh, of transfer. We will soon deal with Jacob being the deceiver, and we will address what Abraham's wishes were in this regard as well. And when you understand this full context, the whole thing actually makes perfect sense. Who was Abraham's favorite? Well, you'll see. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swear unto him. So wait a minute. Jacob demanded an oath here. He knew what he was doing. This is a legally binding oral document. Very smart. He knew what this was, and so did Esau, and he knew the birthright would be his regardless, because it's prophecy. And Jacob gave his brother Esau bread and pottage, and he ate till he was satisfied. And Esau despised his birthright. He never respected it. He hated it. Get that? Understand. He hated Yahuwah, and he hated his lineage of those who serve him. And that is what really matters. That is what this is all about, and Yahuwah already chose which son he wanted to continue the righteous line, and it wasn't Esau. That was already settled. But get this, Jubilees is awesome. For this reason was Esau's name called Edom, which means red. Why? On account of the red pottage soup which Jacob gave him for his birthright. Boom! Done! This is why Esau was named Edom, not because he had red hair, which is Rabbi Babel. And Jacob became the elder, and Esau was brought down from his dignity, just as the prophecy said so. We'll get there. Just as Yahuwah prophesied would happen. Don't feel sorry for Esau. He was evil. Isaac didn't see it because he was a man's man. But Rebekah did. Abraham did and Yahuwah did. This is not a story about deception. In fact, Jacob did not deceive Esau over the birthright. Esau sold it to him. Done. Esau's the one that felt like a bowl of soup was more important than his birthright. Esau did that, not Jacob. And this is told backwards from many pulpits, and it needs to be fixed. And the famine was all over the land. There it is again. And Isaac departed to go down into Egypt in the second year of this week and went to the king of the Philistines to Gerar, unto Abimelech. Now we'll finish Jubilees here for this video, but again, it ends here with stressing that this was a great famine, right? I mean, this was so serious that Jacob was really following the example of Abraham from before 
uh, going into Egypt was his plan. Now, Yahuwah will tell him not to go there, and he does not go, but that was his plan following the same. So this was a big famine. This was a big deal. And yeah, no doubt Esau reduced his birthright to much less value than it should have. However, understanding just how hungry he was is something that many people overlook. Now let's go to Genesis 25, starting in verse 23, and this really wraps it all up. And Yahuwah said unto her, Rebekah, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Now we will see this is Jacob, not Esau, in We'll get to how Esau was killed, in fact, as well. And you'll find Jacob is the stronger of the two, even. Wow, a lot of people don't realize that. They try to make him out as a mama's boy. He is not. And the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, Jacob and Esau. And the first came out, Red. Ooh, Edom. Red. Uh, interesting. All over like an hairy garment. So see, the assumption here is that he had red hair. Uh, yes, he was red-skinned, but it does not say he had red hair. That's just not there. And this will be proven out further in passages to come. We'll cover here. Hebrews simply don't have red hair. It's not a trait of the dark-skinned people that are Hebrews. Uh, they are red-skinned or medium brown to dark brown. Uh, no, Samson didn't either, and we maybe will cover that at some point. They called his name Esau, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Esau. Jacob, Jacob, and Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. Let's look at this word, though, red, in Hebrew, and it really explains itself. So again, Esau came out of the womb, red or ruddy, just as David and Solomon are described so. Just as the Egyptian hieroglyphs illustrate a medium brown and dark brown people of Hebrews, the slaves, not white. There ain't no pyramids showing a white sunburned rabbi with curly locks lugging bricks. It's not there. Oh, someone tried to send such, yet that was just a fraudulent illustration, not something that actually appears on any pyramid. It's not a historical hieroglyph of any sort. You know, we have pictures documenting Hebrews as, well, not white. They're just not. And there is nothing to discuss on the matter. They also did not have red hair, but their skin tone was red or medium brown in the case of Esau. Yes, he was hairy, but he did not have red hair. Doesn't say that. The original word for this Hebrew word, Adami, uh, or ruddy, red in interpretation, pretty much settles this, so let's go there. We discuss this in What Color Was Adam? Check it out. Uh, there it is in full, and we aren't going to remake that video here, so attempt to debate that video here without watching, and you will be muted. Our channel our rules. The very root word here is Adam, or Adam. First man. It means red and ruddy, which is the same every time. Some have attempted to pull out a definition within, uh, in a deeper context, as red in the face, like blushing. That's illiterate, though, in this application, as again, we have pictures and there are no white Hebrews generally. Certainly not the original line. They were medium brown to dark. Brown with no white originally. Just wasn't there. We have illustrations, so it's not like they're not there. 
If you are not mature enough to handle the discussion of race here, uh, what the Bible says about the color of the skin of the patriarchs, well, go find another channel of people too immature to talk about it. There are plenty out there. This channel is for the mature believer who can handle that. Now let's continue in Genesis. Verse 27, And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Now understand, though, Jacob became much stronger than Esau, just as the prophecy said. Just follow his story. He was no lightweight. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, no doubt. He was a man's man. They could belch, you know, and other things together, I imagine. Well, no, that's not there. But I'm teasing. But Isaac was deceived. Nothing wrong with him loving Esau, though. He's his father. I mean, that's his son. What do you expect? He should. It's a good thing he did, or, well, Esau would be far more evil and far worse. However, it took the event of the blessing for Isaac to then wake up and turn Esau down, because that's what he does. When you look at his response and Esau begs, he turns him down. So he does the right thing in the end. Now we'll cover next what Yahuwah said about this, what Abraham said, and what Rebekah was commanded to do. There is much more to this story. But Rebekah loved Jacob, Jacob. You will see she was also following the will of Yahuwah. And Jacob sod pottage, soup, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Yes, this is literal, and far more serious than many pulpits give credit. There was a great famine, remember. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Red pottage or lentil soup, same as Jubilees. For I am faint, therefore was his name called Edom, red, but Genesis doesn't tell us why. Yet Moses did in Jubilees, so he didn't have to say it here, too. This is where the rabbis exploit, because, see, they censored Jubilees where these answers are. And then they take everything that Jubilees answers that is not in Genesis and they exploit it and they change it. And that's what we see many times over in this series especially. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Again, this is a transaction. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? See, Esau didn't respect his birthright. He didn't value it as he should have, and he is the one who demeaned it, not Jacob. If you hear otherwise from the pulpit, well, that's because they're missing the context of Jubilees. That's a problem for that reason. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swear unto him. So again, this is legally binding. He swore an oath. This is not a minor thing, and Esau knew what he was doing, but he didn't care because he didn't value his birthright. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentil soup, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Not thinking about it again, really, because you know what? Esau did not mean to keep his word. And that's very obvious in the rest of the story as it plays out. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He also despised his word, folks. Esau disrespected and hated his birthright, uh, basically being born into a righteous family who kept their word, for that matter, because he despised Yahuwah and Yahuwah's ways. That is the core problem here for Esau, and why he was never chosen by Yahuwah, and again, from birth. We already saw that Yahuwah had to say uh, on this matter. We know what his uh, prophecy is. He wanted Jacob to be the successor to Isaac, period. This is the first installment of the Jacob and Esau saga, and it is fascinating how this plays out. Jubilees offer so much clarity as it does here in this 
video. Was Esau a Jew? Nope. Did he have red hair? No. Hebrews are not Jews, by the way. They don't have red hair. Uh, that's just another illiterate stretch for the synagogue of Satan to try to justify their rape and theft of the land of Israel especially. Um, and, of course, they say they are Yahudim and are not but do lie, according to Messiah himself in Revelation 2.9 and 3.9. So, uh, soon... They will pay the price for that, as five, six of them, according to Ezekiel, will be destroyed for doing so, as the allies and forces of Gog of Magog, watch those videos, Gog of Magog, and answers in Second Esther's even, um, he is the prince demon in the end times uh, who conquered Israel. Yeah, that already happened back in 1918, and we cover that in detail. Not here, though, so don't try to debate that here without watching those or again you too will be muted our channel our rules next we will take this head on was jacob a thief did he steal esau's birthright did he trick him and deceive him is he an evil deceiver jacob the deceiver the answer may surprise many and not what you hear again from most pulpits but this is Torah. We hope all have learned from yet another Answers in Jubilees, Torah set straight once again back to its original intent. We have over 365 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year now, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos and now six in Spanish to start. Uh, we also added uh, subtitles for 22 languages in most of our videos now, uh, and we've been working on that pretty heavily. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often, and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble and Utreon, and our new podcast is also available for all of our videos in audio format as well. All links in the description box and friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative to Facebook, we now have Parlor. Link below. We now have five books published internationally, being read in now over 100 countries, with our new release now available, Rest the 400-plus page case for Sabbath. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it is available in hardcover or softcover there. Additionally, this week, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar with color maps and interior, as so many have requested that overseas as well, as it was black and white before. That's all Amazon would do. But we have graduated their beta program, and we're now able to offer not just color, but that's available on Amazon in hardcover or softcover, if you wish. It's already color in the Philippines. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Just go to ophirinstitute.com for all the links for your area for each of the books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.
The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran, as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilee is also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full text for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated as these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 Warm. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288 page quality paperback has a high resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook, or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org, and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.